Hi guys, Code Red Mining here. So, I am sick of heat. It's not even summertime. It's like 70 degree weather out and my temperatures are getting stupid already. Um, I mean, it's like, what, outside it's 53 degrees and I have GPUs hitting 67. Uh, 70, I mean, I just opened the tent, so temps are a little better temporarily. Um, I've moved all my hottest GPUs out here. Sorry for the blue lights. Um, so these are the ones that just can't tolerate the tent at all. Or like this one's a bump fan. These ones are just, and then I'm not fucking with this one. So it took it forever to get the 63 meg hash. The 5700 XPs are too, too finicky. And I started to leave them outside. And then these two, this 166 is super, it's too hot. I can probably change the path and um, pace, but I'm just lazy and I don't want to mess with it. And then I'll probably honestly end up trading that. I'll probably uptrade that with some cash for something else. That's what I tend to do a lot. Then this fucking Zotac that really irritates me. And yeah, don't buy Zotac stuff. It's as simple as that. I've never had more problem with parts than Zotac. So like I've had Zotac 1060s and 1070s. They both had to get RMA. Uh, I bought them from their used stuff. My Zotac 1060 B1, the fans have gone out. This Zotac, nothing but problems. I hate to hate on Zotac, but I mean, like, come on, guys. I mean, let's get your act together. You're going to charge more than everybody else, and then you're going to still sh have shitty quality. Let's get real here. So, okay. So, last night, I tried to move the tent around. So, I tried to move um, the six down with that one, and then that, these two on a shelf together, and that made the temperatures even worse. So, then I moved it back. And I'm just like so frustrated with the temperatures and stuff. And so I'm going to redo the tubing for the tent. I'm doing a big overhaul. Um, and then also I moved that rent down there. It was getting too hot up here. As you can see up here it's 100. Down there on the ground it's 91. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I'm having too much. I, I don't know. I think the big problem is my inlines are in the tent. This shitty ass non-insulated foil tubing. It just it just feels like it, it doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like I feel like the suction on these should be so much better. For you know, what are they? I think they're 720. And I feel like they should be sucking so much better. So I'm not gonna replace the fans just yet, but I may down the line. So the plan is right now, uh, I'm gonna go hard tubing. I saw Chunk Change XD do it. I'm gonna go hard tubing. I'm ready to knock the shit out of this heat. I'm done with it. So annoyed with the heat in the tent. I never had this much problems. I know the, the server cases pump out a lot of heat, but they're supposed to be helping keep the, cool, the cards cool. And I'm just having too much heat locked in this tent and not moving it out quick enough. So I think a big problem is the tubing alone, like it being the flex tubing, it's just having restrictions and then I have sorry I have limited space back here so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna scoot the tent out a bit more so I'm gonna get rid of that PC it's got two I said 2080 and a 2060 super in it they're both mining flux uh, I'm gonna move it out of I'm gonna move that rig scoot the tent over and then I am going hard to me so I got three two-footers, I got a six-footer, I got crimps, I got tins, um, I got four elbows, so the plan is, so I got these things, so I cut the holes tonight, so that one's going to be intake, these two will be, or yeah, this will be intake, these two will be outtake, uh, I'm going to hook this straight up right here, and I'm actually considering putting the inline fans directly right there, if anybody has an opinion on that, let me know, but I mean, I feel like it'll be a good stability spot for the inline fans. The The distance between the tent and the inlines is not very large, so it'll be able to suck. And then I'll blow directly out. Um, I have a screen that, you know, stops insects and stuff from getting in. And, but it does collect dust and dog hair, so I do have to pull it off and clean it off uh, regularly. But that, I mean, that's to be expected. So I think I'm, I think I'm going to actually connect the inlines right there. I, or I'm going to put them in the middle. Of the two but if I could connect the inlines right there then I do two 
elbows up and then I straight pipe two more elbows into the tent and then I straight pipe into the tent and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy two eight inch uh, like the, the the bigger rectangle um, like uh, ducks or um, oh like the vents that would be like that like a register vent so I want it to be like a big rectangle a big area to suck up more heat and I, I think that'll work um, the worst that happens is this whole project's a giant fail and I return everything and then we're back to square one but I think so this is a six inch tube that's a reducer I just haven't messed with it so this is the hole I cut in the tent so I think what I'm going to have to do is the hard tubes will come in right here I'm going to have the rectangle register on the end of them to make more circumference to suck heat I'll have hard tubing so that'll be full eight inches moving air it'll trap the heat better and then the inlines will be directly attached to the window right there and i just don't think there's any way around it like i have to move the tent away from the window um there's just not enough space so in order for me to do that i'm gonna have to shut everything down i have to move everything out of the tent for the most part i might at least have to move like the shelf out of the tent uh, i'll have to detach all the inline fans so i'm gonna have to take an entire day and when i start this i have to finish it that day or i have to get something finished so the plan is what I'm going is that I'll be able to keep this tent locked up. I have an inline fan pushing air in. I don't know if I agree with having the inline on, but it does push in a lot of cool air from my house, of course, but that's okay. Um, I have this air conditioning, it runs because I spend a lot of time in this room. It gets fucking hot, whatever. Sorry for the language, but you know, it gets, it gets hot. I'm sick of the heat. I'm annoyed with it. Um, that's just a direct thing. I mean, I wrapped up like that because it kept like folding down on itself. I tried to like cut holes in it. So I may, I, I think I'm going to keep that tube as a, uh, as a flex tube. Or if I do, or it'll be like flexed into hard and then I'll spread it out with like little, little cuts in it to like have multiple places to vent air. And I'm hoping this will solve the issue. I'm hoping that. I will just be able to move an atrocious amount of air with the hard tubing. And then the inlines not in the tent will also help with that. And then the 8 inch tubings will not radiate as much heat because they'll be thicker. I think those are galvanized steel. They might be. It doesn't matter. Either way, they're not flimsy, shitty, foil tubing. Um, like I said, the main issue I'm going to have is space. I'm, like I said, I'm going to have to move the entire tent. I'm going to have to pipe it all up, move the tent in. I mean, it's going to be a, it's going to be quite the undertaking. And I'll be honest, uh, I've never messed with it before. I have uh, the crimps, I have the wire, I have the tin snips. Uh, I'm hoping I have enough tubing, but I have a feeling I don't have enough tubing. And like the local hardware store up the street, they're just a joke and they're over they're expensive as shit so they probably won't have it if i need more more tubing and then lowe's downtown lowe's is a goddamn joke anymore i swear to god their prices are so outrageous and that's even if they have anything so i bought an eight inch y from them it was 32 dollars i went to menards today so i was over near one and i had been i had a for my job i was over there so i had been knowing i was going to go over near there so i was saving to go there and Menards had that exact Y for like $12. So I bought all of this supplies so far. Let's tally this up with $130. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to spend more. I'm hoping what will happen is like I have enough tubing to take it in just like a little bit right here. And then I'll tap, I could go separately and buy the eight inch registers, crimp, crimp, attach, attach. Um, I have, uh, these 36 inch duct zip ties they were actually expensive it was like twenty dollars for this pack so i can do some extra securing with that um that's my terramana tequila sign as you can see i have lots of spare parts and then i will use this is like the thin foil tape so i'll use that i'll use that on the pipes um yeah yeah um, also uh update so as you saw in the previous video, I bought that EVGA X3 uh, 38 Ti. It was open box, 1200 bucks. It was a really good deal. It was a piece of shit. Bottom line, piece of shit. Uh, I changed the pass, changed the face. I could not get that thing, no matter what I did. At, 
it was always at 70C in the memories overheating. And that was just, and that was even outside of the tent. I could not get that thing, and it was just so tiny compared to the other ones. And I'll be honest, I had nothing but trouble with my other 3080 Ti, and I had another Ace of Stuff, but I had traded that one for a 2080 Ti and a 6900 XT. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. So I actually took that 3080 Ti back to Micro Center, and I grabbed a, um, a 3070 Ti MSI, which I stuffed in this one because it's a big one. So it, it needs to be in the, the, the Mindbox 6 because of the spacing. So that has six 3070 Ti's and a 3080 Ti in it now. And then also, because you know it was $1,200, that one was about 815 uh, and that was sealed. Um, I bought a open box. Uh, open box 6700 XT. This is my first 6700 XT. I think $540 uh, for 47. Let's see. I am getting so it's extra rig too. I'm getting 46.92 mega hash for $540. Is not a bad deal. If if the prices keep dropping on 6700 XTs, they're gonna become really. They're gonna actually become really, I think, a good buy. So if they get to like $300 and you can get 47 mega hash for $300, or even like 350, that's a good deal. Now, as far as how they do on other algorithms, I know they do really good on dual mining, like Ton or Lithium. Uh, I know they do decent on uh, Kapow, but I, I don't believe they do very good on stuff like Flux um, and like, uh, like Souls, um, that type of algorithms. But, you know what I mean, in the end we can always stick stuff on like ATC, uh, you know what I mean, Hero, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know how they do on Ergo, I'm not sure. Like I said, this is my first 6700 XT, I've just never, I like the 6600s and the 6600 XTs, but the 6700 XTs were just so stupidly overpriced, and now they're finally coming down because, you know, oh, lo and behold, people don't want to pay that for that card because it was basically like, a generation step back like literally this generation is worse than the last generation and then i would have never bought the 6900 xt but i got that in that trade for the 3080 ti which speaking of the 2080 ti so i actually had that thing crap out on me the other night it actually popped up as like um 2080 ti uh showing like the like basically when a card's uh, uh bumped you know when it's cracked and it said malfunction and I was like, oh my God, what the hell is wrong with this thing? And so I tried to put some new BIOSes on it. I couldn't get to work. So I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and open it up. I'll change the pads. I'll repaste it. And let's see how that does. And when I opened it up, the paste was so old. There wasn't even pads. Some of the pads were ripped and stuff. But, I mean, it really wasn't even anything. Uh, so I, I repadded it all, put new paste on it. And when I load it back up, it works. So fingers crossed, it continues to work. Cause that's a really good, really, really good 2080 Ti. I can get 63 mega hash on that one. Uh, and it's, uh, it's that tricks one right there. If I'm able, I'm going to get more 2080 Ti's. I think for the right price, they're a freaking awesome buy. I agree with Red Panda Mighty. Uh, I know I sent him the, the Micron one. But, I mean, still, that's a good buy. I didn't know there was a difference in them, to be honest. I, I, that was my only 2080 Ti at the time. And so I didn't know there was a Samsung Micron difference. I had got that in trade. Or, no, I bought it from a Facebook marketplace. It was a good deal. Um, it was just from some guy who was wanting to part ways. He had upgraded. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video right there. Uh, let's get this heat out of my tent. I need to move heat. Summertime is quick coming. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Come mine with me on Ezil. They actually have 0% fees right now. Uh, so come mine with me on Ezil, and you can get Zillica, which is shot up to 15 cents. You can go mine Zillica and Ethereum. Your Ethereum uh, payout times will basically be the same as if you just straight mine it on Ethermine. Uh, the, the amount of time versus that you mine Zillica versus not is literally cents. Would be sent and you're actually making decent money on Zillica. I wish I had saved all mine, but I was like, eh, I just had saved a bunch, I had to stake. But then I realized that it was some big old hassle to unstake it, so I unstaked it, and then I couldn't get it to actually come back. It's a big ordeal, so by the time I got it back, I was just like, screw it. I sold it all. Um, 
you know what I mean? Like I set my payment, my payout on Zillow a thousand a time. So if you do that math, that's $150 right there. Um, $150 more than what I'm, you know, extra to what I'm mined on ETH. And I'm still getting my same ETH payout times as I did when I mined on Ethermine. So uh, the, my link for Ezil is below. Come mine on Ezil. I just dropped you guys. Sorry about that. And that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.